Hi friends, it's Teacher Carrie. I hope that all of you had a good weekend um, and that maybe some of you got to go outside in your yard or on a walk with a grown-up um, and enjoy the sunshine. I did get to go outside on some walks this weekend. Um, I am here to read you guys another book. This one is called Circus, The Circus Ship by Chris Van Dusen, and it is one of my favorite ones. I'm going to try, I really like the pictures, the, all, um, the drawings that are in the book, so I'm going to try and, after I read it, get the pages close to the camera so that you guys can see all the pages. So, Circus Ship. Five miles off the coast of Maine and slightly overdue, a circus ship was steaming south in fog as thick as dew. There's the ship in the fog. On board were 15 animals who traveled to and fro. The next day it was Boston for another circus show. There are all the animals on the ship. What animals do you see? I see a gorilla. And I'm not sure what that one is. Maybe a gnu. A bear with a hat. An ostrich. And a zebra. Over here I see, what do you guys see? With a trunk and long ears, an elephant, a camel, a lion, a giraffe. Let's see what happens next. The captain, Mr. Carrington, was honest and sincere. He thought that they should drop the hook and wait for things to clear. He doesn't want to try and take the boat to land when it is so foggy outside. But Mr. Payne, the circus boss, was terribly demanding. He stomped up to the helm where Captain Carrington was standing and screamed, Don't stop! Keep going! I've got a show to do. Just get me down to Boston Town tomorrow, sir, by two. There's the captain. He's a little worried about docking the ship. Oh, and there's the circus boss. He looks pretty angry. Then came a crash, an awful bash. Things flew into the air. The ship had smashed into a ledge that no one knew was there. Uh-oh. <laughs> Look at everybody's flying through the air because the ship smashed against something in the water. It was too foggy and they couldn't see and they ran right into it. Whoa. The shattered ship began to tip, then sank without a sound. The splashing, thrashing animals slam round and round and round. There they are. They're all swimming. The giraffe and the camel and the zebra. And, oh look, the crocodile is helping out the lion. The captain said to Mr. Payne, Pray tell, what shall we do? We can't just leave them here to drown. We've got to save them too. The animals, yelled Mr. Payne. Why, sir, what are you? Daft? It's me that you should rescue. Pull me up into the raft. Now ferry me to safety, sir, before I die of cold. Don't question me, barked Mr. Payne. Just do as you are told. There's Mr. Payne. He seems pretty angry. 
and the captain is pulling him into the raft, but I see the captain looking at the animals. He's very worried about what's going to happen to them. Through chilly water all night long, the animals swam on until they reached an island beach just before the dawn. They pulled themselves up on the shore, bedraggled cold and beat, then staggered to the village on weary, wobbly feet. There they are, staggering out of the water. Weary means tired. They're so tired from swimming all night. But they made it to the land. The people in the neighborhood had just begun to rise. And when they saw those animals, they had to rub their eyes. They thought they saw an elephant. But wait, how could that be? And what's that little monkey doing in the cherry tree? They just woke up and looked out their window. And there are all the animals. The elephant and the monkey in the cherry tree. They're very surprised. Even their dog over here is surprised. That would be very surprising. I would be very surprised if I woke up in the morning and there was an elephant outside or a monkey in a tree. Soon, animals were everywhere and into everything. There's an ostrich in the outhouse. There's a hippo in the spring. There's a tiger in the tulips. There's a lion on the lawn. There's a python in the pantry. It went on and on and on. Let's see, do you guys see that tiger in the tulips? Tulips are flowers. I see his tail and his back. A lion on the lawn. Mr. Hood was stacking wood and nearly jumped a mile when he found the alligator sleeping on his pile. He is very surprised. And Miss Dottie Daly, who grew daisies by the bunch, discovered that the zebra had been eating them for lunch. Oh no. There's that zebra eating her flowers that she worked so hard to grow. And Miss Fanny Feeny found, according to the rumors, the silly little circus monkey swinging in her bloomers. <laughs> Look at that monkey. That's so silly. But everything changed quickly, like the turning of the tide. The night the abbot's shed caught fire with Emma Rose inside. From high above the abbot's farm, the tiger saw the shed. The sight of smoke and fire triggered something in his head. He jumped through flames a thousand times back in his circus days. So he ran past all the people and he leapt into the blaze. There he goes, he's jumping right into the fire. Then everybody panicked. Help, help, what can we do? When from the raging fire, something big burst into view. It was the most amazing sight and everybody froze when they saw the tiger saving little Emma Rose. He jumped into the fire and saved her. This is just a story. If you ever see a fire, do not jump into it. Run and tell a grown up, okay? The tiger's risky rescue changed everybody's mind. The animals weren't bothersome. The animals were kind. And so they lived together. Side by side, they got along. It didn't seem like anything could possibly go wrong. Hmm. They look pretty happy. All those animals. Look at that bear riding the bicycle. And the kids are sliding down the back of the elephant. Then Little Red, the messenger, came running with the word. 
Apparently a circus ship had sunk from what he'd heard. The animals are from that boat. They swam in from the bay. The greedy owner wants them back. He'll be here any day. So the people called a meeting and they quickly hatched a plan. No animal that came ashore would sail off with that man. The people in the village do not want the animals to have to go back with the mean circus boss. So they are hatching a plan. They all are getting together and they're figuring out what to do. The next day at the crack of dawn, a ship was at the pier. And up the lane marched Mr. Payne, uh-oh, whose voice was loud and clear. I am the circus owner. My ship sank in the mark. I've come to find my animals and put them back to work. He hiked until he came into the center of the town. His face was red. He scratched his head. He stood there with a frown. Mr. Payne looked high and low, but still he couldn't see the 15 circus animals of his menagerie. Hmm. Mr. Payne cannot see his animals. Do you guys have any ideas about where they might be let's see there's one what is in this stroller in this baby carriage that's not a baby it's the monkey with a baby bonnet up here I see something that looks like that blanket hiding there. I think it's the tiger. And here's the hippo. Looks like the rocks. And I think that someone is hiding in these pile of, of dirt. I think the camel's humps camouflage him up here. And let's see. I see two trees, and then I don't think that's a tree. I think that's an ostrich with its head down in the ground. And I see a flagpole and a flagpole and a giraffe. And somebody riding a bike with a beard and a hat. It's the bear. He ran around the alleyways. He searched the village square. He even checked a chicken coop. His animals weren't there. Mr. Payne was tuckered out. That means he was tired. His heavy chest was heaving. Then Little Red stepped up and said, mm, I think your boat is leaving. Ah! Oh! He ran so fast his, hat, fast his hat fell off. He ran off in a fit of rage. His ship was leaving sight. So he jumped into a rowboat and he rowed with all his might. And from that day, they like to say their lives were free of pain. It was a happy, peaceful place upon that isle in Maine. The end. I hope you like that book. Did you guys know that teacher Shannon was born in Maine and she grew up in Maine? When you guys see her again, you, you should ask her if she had circus animals by her house when she hiding in the bushes and pretending to be trees when she grew up. Well, I am still missing you guys and I hope you're finding some fun things to do. I hope you're enjoying watching me read some stories on videos. I'm gonna be putting some here a couple times a week so you guys can tune in and watch if you want to and I will see you later. Bye!